If you have problems with any pest, this is the video for you. In this video, we'll be discussing a procedure and methodology that we can use to get rid of any pest we have, and that is developing an integrated pest management plan. So make sure to stick around to the end to learn all about how you can get rid of any pest you have on your farm or in your garden. For us, we have a problem with flies, so we'll be touching um, on that a bit in this video and some other videos. My name is Till Simmons from Agrisol, and this is Agriculture Explained. The best way to get rid of any pest is to implement an integrated pest management plan. Now, even though I'm not telling you exactly what to do, this is a procedure or a methodology that you can use for any pest. So it's really worthwhile understanding uh, what an integrated pest management is, or IPM, um, and how you can use this on your farm to get rid of any of your pests, or at least start to control the numbers. So what an integrated pest management uh, is is a combination of different control methods. So these include cultural, physical, genetic, biological, um, chemical and regulatory um, controls. Now all of these are used in combination with each other to tackle the pest at different approach angles. So what I mean by this is to say for example uh, we have a fly problem. We actually have a fly problem at the moment uh, and we'll talk about that soon but um, we've got some pretty interesting biological controls um, from Bugs for Bugs. Anyway, we'll get to that soon but what we can do is we can target say the adult fly through fly traps and so that's that's one approach to get rid of our fly problem. We can also um, get rid of the breeding material um, or the, um, the material that the um, fly, pupa are, are grown in, and we can also use these biological controls to, to get rid of um, the fly pupa. So that is, so it's, it's, IPMs are talking about different approach angles to targeting one specific pest, um, and over time we're going to be reducing the population numbers. So what are these control methods? So the first one are cultural controls. Now this is more so changing the environment um, to make it less favourable for that pest. So an example of this is that flies, um, they can breed in uh, animal manure. So pretty much if we're in a uh, stable or have a, some kind of uh, shelter for animals, if we're not getting rid of this material, it's going to build up and it's going to be uh, a favorable cultural uh, environment for these flies. So what we can do as a control is to remove, say the manure or the bedding material, and that's a cultural control to get rid of the flies. So we're getting rid of a, a stage or an, um, a stage of development for this pest, we're removing that and that's going to lower our um, fly population. So pretty much by getting rid of um, uh, the breeding material, such as the manure or the bedding, um, we're going to prevent them from breeding. So that's cultural, it's changing the environment pretty much. Physical controls, that includes um, physically preventing, say, um, pests to get into an area, such as, um, say, fences for foxes uh, or um, fine meshing. Um, so if you have a, a greenhouse, you have know, meshing at the entries to prevent um, any um, bug getting in. So it includes barriers, traps, so uh, traps as well, so fly traps or um, bug traps, and as well as physically removing them. So going along, physically removing the bugs, squishing them, um, anything pretty much physical. Next we have uh, genetic controls. This is improving your genetics to uh, favour one characteristic or a couple of characteristics to make that um, species more resilient to the pest. So for example, if we have cattle and it's a tick um, prone area, we might move to Boss Indies cattle which have a finer uh, skin so that they can feel the tick and flick them off. Um, and so it's, even though we might not get all the ticks, if we can reduce them by any amount, it's uh, better than not doing anything. So genetic controls, making sure that the species of whatever we're um, farming, either plant or animal, are more tolerant to uh, the pests that we're having problems with. Next we have biological controls. Now these are really cool. These are um, bugs and insects and uh, potentially even diseases that we release to control our pest um, species. So what this basically is, is we're, we're, in, uh, we're creating a uh, almost an ecosystem to make that certain pest in check. So we're bringing in other species uh, to control our pest species. So an example of this is parasitic wasps with our flies. Now we'll have a, a video explaining all about our parasitic uh, wasps and biological controls uh, a bit more in detail in the future. But basically they're just bringing in other species to help us. Um, some other examples are Marima um, dogs. They're um, sheep dogs and they pretty much stay with the herd and they scare away foxes or other pests 
like that. So bioloco controls are a great thing we can implement. They're um, really long-term thinking. Next, we have chemicals, which are generally um, are pesticides, anything to really quickly kill the um, pest. Next, we have regulatory. Now, these are more uh, rules and what uh, what not to prevent, say, spread um, through uh, quarantining or isolation of um, either disease material or sick animals. Any kind of rule um, that we can put in place to prevent um, further spread or further infection. Now, again, these are these are our almost tools that we can implement. Now, there's different types um, of options within these. Uh, these are more kind of the um, the groups that different controls fall into. But what we want to do, we want to pick a couple of these and implement them onto our farm. So we want to uh, bring in maybe at least three or so to tackle a pest from multiple angles. We want to be cleaning up our yards, introducing parasitic wasps, as well as, um, say, traps to trap flies. We want to introduce lots of different things to tackle the population so that they don't build up a resistance to one particular thing. Now, that's a really important one. If we say we're only using um, pesticides to control um, any, any pest, uh, any bug or uh, even weeds, they can build up a resistant to that um, disease. Now, this is, this is a great um, advantage of integrated pest management. And that is that we're not just relying on one method. We're relying on a range of different methods. So it's harder for um, a pest to develop resistance. Because, say, uh, we send a round of um, pesticides through and it kills, say, 95% of um, a pest, say, a, a bug. That remaining 5% of bugs could contain um, a couple of bugs or a high percentage within that population um, that contain a resistance to that pesticide. But what an integrated pest management helps with is sweeping up, I guess, that remaining 5%. So say we have, for that bug, we have sticky traps. Um, there's a chance that those, whatever is resistant to um, the uh, pesticide can then be um, reduced with the sticky traps. Or vice versa, if we have a bunch of sticky traps to control them at the start, um, when we apply the um, pesticides, we're not going to be getting as much of a, a resistance, resistance buildup just because we're not just applying uh, pesticides. So integrated pest management is great for um, a more sustainable and environmentally friendly uh, farming. It's much more stable too. It's We're not just uh, waiting for, say, bugs to build up into an um, overwhelming amount and then destroying more. We're maintaining a, a um, population size which is um, maintainable. We're not, ma we're not allowing the population size to get out of hand. The aim of this is not to get rid of a particular um, pest completely. You just can't get rid of all the bugs. It, it won't be practical, it won't be feasible, it will cost way too much if you want to get every single one. But what is practical and feasible is, say, reducing the population by 30%. Maybe 30% will uh, make it a bearable load for our plants and um, the damage that we see won't be as much of a problem. Maybe a bit more than 30%, but depending on uh, the different pests and how aggressive you want your controls to be will depend on, on the um, population decrease. But either way, we're just trying to make everything a manageable level. So a big part of integrated pest management is uh, planning. We want to make sure we're picking the right controls to use at the right time uh, to get the maximum benefit. So. Remember, these are our tools. How are we gonna implement these tools onto our farm? The best way to start is by monitoring. So we're going to start monitoring um, our pest. Now, if we haven't seen it before, we just pick up on it or um, things are starting to, say, either uh, die or plants are becoming less and less healthy and you notice a bug, that's monitoring. We're going to want to monitor our, our crops and animals all the time, see if there's anything strange. Um, and then I guess we can start our next um, step. So the next step is control. Now this um, is reactive, so we're reacting to when we first notice um, this pest. The best reactive control um, is by far chemical approach. Now it's very quick, it's very rapid. If we have a very large pest presence, we're not going to want to wait a year for um, our long-term controls to set in. We want um, them to be removed straight away so that we're not losing any production. So we're going to be reactive. So we know what we want to do. We want a really quick impact on um, the pest. Now it's up to what methods are we going to introduce to allow that. Now this is actually a big task. To make a um, really effective integrated pest management, we need to know a lot more about the pest. 
So we need to know its breeding cycle, we need to know what material um, that it breeds in, we need to know its favourable conditions. But say we use a pesticide and just wipe them all out, we then want to monitor to see um, the after effects of that, if it was effective, if it wasn't. And then we want to move on to our final stage, which is uh, preventative. So we want to set up long-term um, controls to make sure that the pest won't get out of control again. Now this is where most of, I guess, the work for integrated pest management uh, lies in. We want to be uh, implementing long-term strategies. So that's our biological controls. That's uh, physical, changing the way we farm to reduce um, the pest load. We want to change maybe perhaps our genetics. Long-term thinking to prevent pest outbreaks. Now, after this, say we implemented all everything we want to, we go back to monitoring. Integrated pest management is all about monitoring. We need to monitor to make sure we know, um, don't need to know the exact population size, but we need a rough idea of how many bugs there are. So we can use sticky traps and stuff. So um, you can get uh, sticky boards and, and then use that to determine um, roughly how strong the disease presence is. And then say they build up and build up, um, and there's a higher uh, population amount, we then go to our reactives again, um, and then um, either pesticides or um, physical removing of bugs. Um, and then we go back to monitoring, make sure it's effective, and then we review what um, preventative controls worked in the last time, what didn't work, why, um, and then fix our uh, control methods to prevent the um, pest from increasing the population size again. And then it goes back to monitor monitoring. So it's a big cycle. It's not just one event. So we're constantly monitoring our farm to make sure uh, we're controlling this population size. So there we have it. That is integrated pest management. Again, we're not trying to get rid of all of the, um, the pests. We're just trying to make it to a manageable level that we're not losing production. We can do that by uh, implementing different um, strategies or constru uh, controls. And these act as our tools to do this. All of these will have different advantages and disadvantages as well as short-term, uh, long-term benefits. Some are really long-term, some not so much. So we need to understand what our controls are, how they implement, uh, how they affect our farm, how they um, impact the pest, and then make an educated decision on what works best for our farm. So the best way um, I can uh, show you how to design an integrated pest management uh, is to design one for you, pretty much. So in the next video, we'll be looking at um, how we can make an integrated pest management for flies using some of our parasitic wasps that I got from uh, Bugs for Bugs. Now they're, uh, they're a really good company there uh, in Australia. They make biological controls for a lot of pests, so I'd highly recommend checking them out um, to see if they make a bio biological control uh, for the pests that you're dealing with. Um, like I said, we, we're using them uh, to get rid of flies. If you're in any kind of uh, farming, I bet you have some problem with uh, either flies or some other pest. Highly recommend checking them out. If you like this video, make sure to check out some of our other videos. We have some on plant production, animal production, and we even have a series on regenerative agriculture. I guess integrated pest management uh, falls into regenerative agriculture. As long as we're improving our farm to uh, be more sustainable and more friendly uh, to the environment. And integrated pest management is, um, on the long term, it is more economically favourable. Anyways, make sure to check some of that out. Make sure to ask any questions in the uh, comments. I'll be um, glad to hear them and get back to you. And finally, make sure to get on board uh, with the MetaTrees NFT project. If you like this planning out of uh, farming systems um, and really getting involved in farming, I really encourage you to join our project, join the community. When we start regenerating MetaFarm, we will be uh, integrating a lot of these uh, different processes and making sure uh, we can improve the sustainability of the farm. And anyway, I thank you very much for watching. My name is Till Simmons from Agrisol, uh, and this is Agriculture Explained.